I'm so disappointed. This movie would have been so much scarier if he had a Samsung. What is up, Netflix fans? Welcome back to my channel. Mr. Harrigan's phone is the brand new Stephen King adaptation on the platform. Today, we're going to talk about it. Is this movie good? Is it scary? So when Mr. Harrigan dies, the teen who befriended and did odd jobs for him puts his smartphone in his pocket before burial, and when the lonely youth leaves his dead friend a message, he is shocked to get a return text. This is directed by John Lee Hancock on Netflix, of course, and is rated PG-13 for thematic material, some strong language, violent content, and brief drug material, but it's not necessarily a movie that's going to be all that scary for the kids. So I guess in a way it's a family film, but when you get Stephen King, you want something more than just a family film. You want something that's going to creep you out or leave you creeped out. And that's unfortunately not what Mr. Harrigan's phone was able to do, even though the first half of this movie was fantastic. And I mean, I was so engaged with this concept and said to myself multiple times, if they pay off on this buildup, because the buildup is what I was looking forward to the least. You're waiting for this old man to die. That sounds bad, but really, I mean, that's the entire goal of the movie because once he dies, the spooky things start to happen. So that's kind of what I was waiting on when this movie started. I'm like, all right, Sutherland, amazing actor, uh, phenomenal. But once you die, then the movie's going to kind of kick it up a notch. That wasn't the case at all. The movie was slowly kicking it up a notch every single scene that these two lead characters are on screen because the chemistry is good. Both characters in Craig and Mr. Harrigan, they have this outcast mentality. A conversation is had between the two a little bit later in the film where he literally moved away from people because he doesn't like the fact that people try to take advantage of him or just try to talk to him. And then you have young Craig played by Jaden Martell, who is, you know, kind of the cliche teenager who doesn't fit in, can't quite find his way. But there's also this passion he has for what he was hired to do originally and that's to go and read to Mr. Harrigan. And from there, two individuals, one specifically, you would never imagine Mr. Harrigan forming this type of relationship where he can actually trust someone and maybe even confide in someone. That relationship is formed, and thus there is something interesting there between those two characters. Then the movie starts to get into kind of the message of it all, and that's where technology can lead us, and how the opening up of information thanks to cell phones and technology, the World Wide Web, and that's introduced to Mr. Harrigan thanks to Craig, because Mr. Harrigan, he's old school. He doesn't want to have anything to do with this new nonsense, but those themes start to become more prominent because, you know, as soon as that's introduced, things start to get a bit weird, and then when Mr. Harrigan passes away, it takes that extra step of getting even weirder, and that's when it really starts to feel like a Stephen King movie, but that's also when it loses every ounce of steam that it had. I look at a director in John Lee Hancock who has done some movies that I've really enjoyed. I'm a big fan of The Blind Side. I've said it before, I'll say it again, but he's a director that's really good at characters, their interactions, building that humanity, bringing about the emotions, and that's really evident in the first, I'd say the first half of this film because that's when my interest was at its highest. But when the Stephen King-isms start to kick in and when the themes start to become more prominent of, oh, cell phones are bad, it just doesn't feel like he knows exactly what to do with those themes. It also feels like there's not enough here to make for an interesting, not only an interesting finale, but an interesting second half of the movie because there are things introduced and even new characters altogether. Kirby Howe Baptiste, who plays Mrs. Hart, that should have been, should have felt like more of an integral character than what she felt like, but I, I mean... That, that was a waste. That was a waste of time, and that was a waste of a moment. I also like the relationship between Craig and his dad, but when Mr. Harrigan passes away, there's an opportunity to give us so much more emotion there, uh, but it's never hit upon. It's barely even talked about, and even everything that Mr. Harrigan does for Craig when he dies, when he passes away, that's briefly spoken about. Uh, but the paranormal elements, this is what we're here for. This is what I expected to be the best part of the film. They're there. They're translated. I'm not familiar with the source material, but it feels like they're translated in the most dull and uninteresting way possible. 
and it never really leads to anything. And this movie, it just fizzles. You have all of these interesting ideas, and the main idea that the supernatural thing happening, that's really cool, but it doesn't really go anywhere. And it doesn't really bring about anything to think about once the movie actually ends. And even that, I'm like, okay, this could be building to something, but what's it building to? I don't know. Let's see what it builds to. And you know what it builds to? The credits. Because the credits pop up, and I'm like, that... That... Huh? And honestly, I wouldn't be this upset if I didn't enjoy the first half as much as I did enjoying the build-up on that level. What should be way more boring than what we got in the second half. Uh, Jaden Martell, his performance as Craig is really good. I love the chemistry with Sutherland, but as soon as Sutherland goes away, the movie itself becomes way more uninteresting, and that could be a testament to his performance as well. Uh, just a really nice job by him. Before I give you my score, do you disagree with me? Did you enjoy Mr. Harrigan's phone? Did you like the second half way more than I did? And What could they have done better to make this movie more interesting. Also, if you like this review, be sure to drop a like down below. That would be awesome. After a strong start and some solid chemistry between the two leads, the film begins to lose steam when the supernatural elements are introduced. It is as if they did not know where to go with these interesting ideas, and the end result is a disappointment. Not a terrible film, better than some other Stephen King movies, but disappointment is the right word for me. I'm going a 50% with my score. Uh, it is one that I think families can watch and somewhat enjoy just for the performances alone. Uh, but the supernatural elements, well, there are other films on Netflix for that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you soon.